Hello, Uncle. Let's pray. Yeah, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time that you've given us to be in your holy presence. Yes, Lord, even though we are separated by places and distance, thank you, Lord, for bringing us together through this online platform so we could meditate on your words. We could listen to you, Lord, as you talk to us through your word. Dear Lord, we ask you that to cleanse us, Lord, through your word and make us holy and clean. Help us to go on, on to perfection. And as uncle is going to talk to us and speak to us, Lord, help us to open our hearts and minds, Lord. So it is not just the words, but it is just, it's the living waters that flows into us, oh Father. That will change us, that will make us, that will mold us and make us into your better children of God as you expect us to live in this world. We come into entire session to your mighty hands, Lord. Bless everyone who has joined and yet to join and help us to have a good time of fellowship and word of God to be shared, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. And then, uh, so let's uh, jump into this into the subject as we have been discussing. It's called as you and I as a church, the body of Christ. Okay. Now, when when uh, when we have been discussing about church, we actually as individuals are the most important church building, as we call. So to maintain this church building is of utmost importance because this is the church that will be raptured. Of course, the universal church is there. The bride of Christ is there. We are individually attached there. So hence we become the entire group and then we'll be raptured. So we get into the presence of God because of what has happened here, because of who he is in our heart and what he is doing and cleansing, protecting and making us what we need to become. All right. So let's, let's continue because, you know, this is the, now, this is the church that you know that is under attack. This is under attack. <clears throat> I've never, I've never seen you know the devil kind of attacking the building. The building, of course, there's so many things that are happening. I do not want to discuss other things, but definitely it is this building that he is after. Okay, the devil is after this building, your body and my body. So, and you know he he tries to capture the mind also. We will do another study called as the salvation of the mind sometime. Uh, later on, later on we can do that. <clears throat> later on we can do that. But let me let me assure you that uh, as much as the devil is attacking the Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit of God, the Father superintending or overseeing everything, we are safe. We are protected by the grace of God. Now, you know, I've given you for the last two days also, I've given you an example of how Elisha, the prophet, was protected by hordes and hordes of angels like chariots of fire, okay? And you are protected. We all are protected. But only that, he, God doesn't want us to cross our yellow lines. Yellow lines means the forbidden lines in our mind, in our heart, we should not cross them, should not unnecessarily get into trouble it is possible unnecessarily go someplace and try to <clears throat> do something which is not right spiritually okay which can be evil so the evil from that uh, from that territory can you know can can disturb your spiritual life so we got to be careful not unnecessarily do things just because someone did it maybe you know someone did it in africa or some other place so it doesn't mean that it becomes a blanket rule for everyone so let us be careful and let us take god's word of how when you know when we are tempted what we should do and how we should go about all right so we we saw the background of lucifer the devil and also we also saw i made that profound statement which i think right up to the end of this study we will make the statement that Christianity is not a playground, but it's a battleground. It's a battlefield. Okay. <clears throat> now, let us look at, uh, we, we saw the enemy's background, that where he was as a cherub and how he was completely sent out of heaven because of pride, because of the I wills that he said, five things that he said. Not just because he said five things. If he had said one thing also, it would have been sufficient. So iniquity was found in his heart. In his heart it was found. It's not that openly he came with a mic and said, said certain things. No. He said, the Lord says in Ezekiel chapter 28, 
when iniquity was found in you. Okay, he is the originator of sin, as we call. Then we saw his reason. Jesus believed that he is there, and of course he talked with them and all those um, things that I gave you, and also his works. His works that we see he tempted Adam and Eve. I think yesterday we saw that study. We're not going to go back again, but let me tell you that the devil is a liar from the beginning. That's what the Bible says. He's a liar from the beginning. And then what happens is because he lies, the lies are sugar-coated so that you can take it in. Okay, he gives you half-truth. Half-truth he will give you. So half-truth actually is lies. And half-truth itself is dangerous. Okay? So when you're dealing with uh, the devil, when you're dealing with temptation, we should be careful to know what God has said in his word. In a minute or two, when we get into this next uh, temptation that he tempted Jesus Christ himself, then you'll understand the value of God's word. Okay? <clears throat> uh, please turn your Bibles to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, this evening. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4. Before turning, what you should do is you should make a note of it. Matthew 4, 1 to 11. 1 to 11 verses. Okay? So let me read them for you. 1 to 11 verses. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that the stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into a, an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him alone shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. This is a very, very important portion of scripture in the life of our Savior Jesus. Why? And when it happened, just as he began his ministry, okay, he did begin with fasting and praying. I remember of several people beginning the, their ministry with fasting and praying, even Paul, as we see, you know, as soon as he was struck on the road to Damascus, he was blinded in his eyes. Somebody else had to help him out. And he goes to a certain place and then he stays in a house and then he started fasting and praying for three days. He did not eat anything, drink anything. Then Ananias was sent by God to him and he prayed over him. Scales like that fell off from his eyes. He could see. Then he began to eat and drink and then begin his ministry. That was three days. But here Jesus is fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. Okay. He didn't eat or drink there. And then, you know, we see that he, 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 he just happened just after the baptism of Jesus Christ. Okay, now you may have several questions about baptism and, you know, what kind of baptism this was. You know, all that is for another time. Okay, we may not discuss the baptism itself in this uh, study. And if you have a question, hold on to the 
question and maybe put it in a chat, then we'll be able to answer. Okay, that's not in the scope of our study right now, but in the scope of our study is spiritual warfare. All right, spiritual warfare. And Jesus was not, Jesus was not uh, like, you know, uh, like, like he, 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 he was not insulated from that. Satan did come, Satan did come and try to attack and tempt Jesus Christ with real things, with real things, okay? So what we will do is, what we will do, we must understand, understand how Jesus began to overcome, okay? What he was tempted with and how the story unfolds to us. Let's begin to read verse one. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Very interesting. Does the Holy Spirit lead Jesus to be tempted by the devil? That's what the scripture says. I didn't say this. This is what the Bible says, okay? But I'll give you some insights on this. Little later on, I'll, let me give it. Luke's Gospel chapter 4 also has the same uh, what is that narrative of uh, Jesus being tempted? And the Bible says in verse 1 of Luke 4, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit returned from Jordan because there he was baptized. As soon as Jesus came out of the uh, baptism uh, that you know, in River Jordan, as soon as he came out, several things happened. The heavens opened to him. Okay, the heavens opened to him, and then the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove so that there was a visible manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove. Why the Holy Spirit chose the dove itself? There are several uh, conclusions for that, but that's not in the scope of our study, okay? Just accept that, that there was a visible manifestation of the Holy Spirit of God, right? And then um, he, the Holy Spirit came and dwelt on him or descended and then stayed on Jesus Christ as we see. And also we see that there was a voice from heaven of the Father. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. <clears throat> you know, I'm, I've been intrigued by this very statement itself. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. When do you give a certificate? After you complete your studies. Okay, that means after you complete your studies, you will be given a certificate. You'll be certified. Okay, whether you are you're studying to be an engineer or teacher, doctor, IT, whatever it is, as soon as you finish, you will be certified as you know you are you you have passed out of the college and then you know you have scored such and such marks and now you are ready. Now you are ready for the ministry, as you say, you know, for the for the work that is given to you. But here, the father actually sent the certificate to his son right in the beginning of his ministry. And he says, I'm well pleased already. I'm, I'm well pleased. Lo and behold, lo and behold, you know what happened? Jesus in John 17, as we have just seen in the past, past weeks, as we have seen the blessings of the upper room, in John 17, Jesus says, Father, I have finished the work that you have given me. Wow. He got the certificate in the beginning itself. And then he completes the work as he is certified. The beloved son of God. The pleasing son of God. So he was pleasing his father. He used to talk to his father. That is what, <clears throat> that is what really blows the mind of the devil. You and I will be tempted when we live such a godly life. You will be tempted. I will be tempted. I am tempted. You are tempted. Okay? Many times we have conquered. We have conquered. We have, here and there we have slipped. Okay? So what happens is, there we have to pick up from there. We have to remember where we repented. Uh, sorry, we, we, we must remember where we fell. And from that point, we should repent and come back. And the Lord accepts us. The Father accepts us. Okay? If the prodigal son's father accepted the prodigal, he will accept you and me also when you completely repent, turn around, and then come back to the father. Okay? 
All right. So there is there is hope actually. There is hope for every sinner, every backsliding person also. But just because there is hope, we should not make a mess of our life. We should not take advantage of the situation. I would never. I I don't know no, uh, what to call a person. If he finds an iodine bottle, let's say this, this is the iodine bottle. Okay, he'll go and cut himself because there's already an iodine bottle or, you know, some medicine is there to put on the... No, you will not do that unless you go, like, you know, you, you know, you're out of your mind. Okay, no, we don't do such things. So that's why when we have a hope to come back to the Lord, it doesn't mean we should continue in sin. Paul said that in Romans chapter 6. Shall we therefore continue in sin because grace may abound? That grace may abound. No, no, no. Just because there is grace, we should not frustrate the grace of God. Okay? So, here, lo and behold, the, Jesus Christ is full of the Holy Spirit of God and then he's led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. 40 days and 40 nights. Okay? What happened in the 40 days, 40 nights? It's not written. Please don't inquire. Okay? That's been hidden from us. We do not know what happened. But as soon as he ended, something happened. Whether, whether Satan continuously tempted Jesus many times, and these three are written, we do not know anything. But at least these three are written for we to understand that it is in the same realm as the devil tempted Adam and Eve is the same way he is tempting the last Adam. Okay, the last Adam, Jesus Christ, who is our Savior. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> verse, um, verse 2. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards hungry. Interesting thought. Interesting thought, okay? <clears throat> I have I had already I had seen this um, Bible verse and I was wondering what it really means, what it really means. And also when the tempter came and tempted Jesus Christ in the first temptation to turn the stones into bread, what Jesus answered him also as compared to as compared to verse two, uh, the explanation actually sprang out and the Holy Spirit ministered to my heart. This I'll be explaining to you just a minute. Verse 3 And when the tempter came to him and he said, If thou be the Son of God That's a wrong statement to do in the first place. Just now, that means 40 days ago from the time he asked the question um, 40 days ago the father actually had the... Okay, let me see if I can find a piece of paper. <clears throat> All right, here it is. Okay. The father had sent the certificate from heaven. What was the certificate? This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So the declared certification is that Jesus is the Son of God. So why does Satan try to listen to this very carefully so that it's helpful to us? Why does Satan tries to meddle or interfere with the certification from heaven? Because we must understand if Jesus was tempted, we are tempted too. We are also tempted here. Do you know that Bible verse? Let me take you to that Bible verse. Turn to Hebrews chapter 4. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 4. Okay, verse 15. Okay. Verse 15, maybe we can read verse 16 also. Let me read it for you. Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, 
but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So our high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, while on earth, he was tempted in all the directions, in all the points, <clears throat> in all the points as we are tempted. We have sinned, but he did not sin. Okay, that should give us encouragement that we have someone who has never sinned, who doesn't know sin at all, never ever in eternity, from eternity past to eternity future as we call, never. So such an one is our high priest. When we can come, when we sin, we can come to him boldly and say, Father, I've sinned against you. And there comes the covering of God's reconciliation or God's um, robe of righteousness again imputes to be imputed on us. Okay, then that's why he says, let us, that is the reason why he says in verse 16, let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Okay, so Jesus was tempted. So the certification was given from the heaven, from, from the father. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. People listen to this. John the Baptist listened. Several other people listened to this. It was a public, open attestation, public certification from the Father of his dear son. Now let's bring it to 21st century. Bring, let's bring it to 21st century. When, as soon as you and I accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior and God, repent of our sins, we, we, we use that word in the Bible, we are saved, okay? We are saved. We become believers and later on we'll become disciples of Jesus Christ, okay? So when you are in John's Gospel chapter, uh, chapter 1, let me read that verse for you so that it will be very, very helpful for you and for all of us. John's Gospel chapter 1, read here, uh, <clears throat> verse 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That means you've been given the authority and power. As soon as you believe on Jesus' name, you have become the child of God. So what happens? So what happens? The certification comes from the Holy Spirit of God. Listen, salvation certificate, I as a pastor, cannot give to my congregation. Not salvation certificate. Baptism certificate, they come to my table and say, Pastor, may I have my baptism certificate? Okay, so and so, so and so. We check the computer, we check the records and say, you know, when, when he was baptized, when she was baptized, then we give the certificate. And also they come for like reference certificate or membership certificate or, you know, maybe marriage certificate. Some people have died and passed away into glory. They need a death certificate, of course. The church death certificate may may or may not hold much in, in the government today, but still, all kinds of certificates we can give, the church can give. But, beloved son certificate, you are, a, you are the child of God certificate, only God can do it. God can do it. That day, it, 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 it actually came that way. It actually came that way. Do you know that? <clears throat> Who came down as the as in the form of a dove, the Holy Spirit. You got it right. The Holy Spirit. Turn to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Okay? See, when, when the heavens were opened for Jesus, the Holy Spirit came in the form of a dove and dwelt on him. And then I feel very strongly that the Holy Spirit brought the certificate and confirmed it to the people around them that this is the Son of God. And for them to understand clearly what is written in the certificate, God the Father pronounced that certificate, announced that certification. Turn to Romans chapter 8, please. Okay? Now, verse 15. Okay, verse 14 onwards, 14 onward, let me read. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. They are the sons of God. Okay? Verse 15. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Okay? 
16 is very important. The spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Many people might say, you know, you are a child of God. Your pastor may say, you're a child of God. Your other people might say, you, 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 you are a child of God. But the actual certification must come from the Holy Spirit of God directly to your spirit saying, you are the child of God. So, you must be wondering, you know, is pastor going somewhere else, taking the certificate somewhere else? No, no, no. I know where I'm going. You know why? Because, <clears throat> you know why? Because I was going to tell you when Satan asked this question, if you are the son of God, that means to say he started attacking Jesus' identity as the son of God. So Satan has not changed his plans in the 21st century. He wants to attack your identity and my identity in Christ. Make us doubt our identity. Sometimes I've seen in my, in my church and also in other church, in other places when I've gone, they would have been saved. But you know, the devil has been reminding of their past so much, their guilt feeling has become so much that they begin to question, am I really a child of God? So this is the trick of the devil. Be careful. Be, let's be careful. I need to, I'm included in this. Don't think, you know, the pastor is excluded. No, no, no. We all are included in this. We need to be careful how this identity should be protected because this certification has come from the Spirit of God to our own spirits. Inside, we will come to know. Okay? How do you come to know is you begin to understand the Bible. Begin to understand the Bible. Because the author himself has come to stay with us. And he's going to teach us. He's going to teach us. Okay? <laughs> I think these are not in my notes. These are revelations. So we need to go here and there a little bit. 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. I will be reading verse 27. One John chapter two and verse twenty-seven. But the anointing which you have received of him abides in you. Who is anointing? The Holy Spirit of God. Okay, he okay abides in you, and you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and the and is and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. That means the Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God who certifies you and me as the son of God, as the daughter of God, the children of God. He is the one who is going to teach us. That's why we understand the Bible. So, the, so, so what is the positive proof that you are the child of God? If you understand the Bible. And if you're not able to understand the Bible, one of the two things. One is, one is that you're too lazy to read God's word and study God's word. Okay? Or, or and then let me continue a little more. Or you may be, you may be having, you know, uh, what is that? Uh, too many avenues. You may just watch YouTube. Maybe you will watch messages and you will just talk, watch other people preach or teach, whatever it is. But by yourself, you're not eating the prepared food of God. That's why you don't, sometimes you don't understand, okay? I didn't say that in all time you don't understand. I didn't say that. But if you're not understanding anything at all, I encouraged my church one day that, you know, you need to recheck whether the Spirit of God is dwelling in you or not. That means whether you're born again or not, whether the certification has come from the heaven or not. With the Holy Spirit of God. That's the positive side. And also, believers, of course, uh, I'll, I'll give you another homework, please. Please take this homework home. Okay? I want you to go home and read 1 John chapter 2. There are several points to prove that you are the child of God. 
okay and then tick start ticking those start ticking those if you are in all of those okay then you will understand the certification from heaven why i took a little more time in the certification is because the devil is after your identity in christ okay so if we are sure of the identity of our identity individually in christ we can face the devil we can face the devil we can talk to the devil okay let us rejoice that our god has given us the identification as many as received him to them gave he the power to become the children of god and also those who believe on his name yes okay so he tried to attack jesus's identity and kind of kind of kind of you know loosen his grip so to say he thought satan thought me he will jesus will lose in his grip and identity because he started talking about the certification no but jesus jesus came to know that you know he is trying to attack my identity because 40 days ago jesus was already certified then what happens let's see was 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 3 verse 3 and we will come back to matthew 4 sorry matthew 4 again let's come back i'm reading verse 3 and when the tempter came to him he said if thou be the son of god command that these stones to be made bread when the screen opens as the drama begins here when the screen opens the truth of the matter is jesus has 40 days fasted day and night he has fasted for 40 days and the bible says afterwards he was hungry okay we'll come to that being hungry and the logic of the things but i'm reminded of another revelation which god gave me many years ago so for 40 days jesus was hungry or not hungry mm-hmm. i don't think he was hungry because the bible says afterwards he was hungry read verse 4 please with me but he jesus answers to the devil but he answered and said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of god okay hold on to this thought man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god okay so for 40 days and 40 nights jesus was not alone in the wilderness who had led him you're right the holy spirit of god the third person in trinity had led the second person in, in trinity into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil so i feel very strongly based on what how he how jesus answered the devil by what bible verse he took in deuteronomy i'll give you the just the references so that we can we can read it later okay okay so when he said it is written that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god so for 40 days i feel very strongly that jesus and the holy spirit kept talking to one another holy spirit is god Jesus is hundred percent God and hundred percent man. Don't forget that. So it is written, "Man shall not live by bread alone." So Jesus stands in the representation of man, and he continues to live by the constant conversation with the Holy Spirit of God. But he shall not live by bread alone. but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of god to the ear and heart of man the man christ jesus he is our representative he has given us food for thought for our temptations as satan will come along whatever your certification might be whatever the father must have said about you whatever the holy spirit must have said about you what year we you were saved what month you were saved and you know whatever it is still satan would come and try to attack your identity 
So we must talk back to the devil and say, I submit to my father, my Jesus Christ, and then I resist you. Get away from me. Okay? As soon as you, you, as, as soon as you say, my father, your identity, identity is again not established, but reaffirmed. Constantly being reaffirmed. Okay? Supposing you're in a fight on some, on some street or something like that. Some street, something like that. Okay? Maybe someone is coming and hitting you up, beating you up. Maybe three of them have come and trying to beat you up. <laughs> but uh, they don't know that you just got out of the car, an official government car, and then you came this side. Something happened. Maybe you spilled something, so they are beating you up. Something is happening. Okay? <laughs> when, when all this is happening, you shout out and say, Dad, and from that government car, a fully uniformed three-star police inspector steps out because he's your dad. So once you were, okay, now let, let, let me back up a little bit. Were you, were, weren't you as much of a son as, as before, as much as you are now? Yes, 100%. But constantly when you reaffirm and call your dad, the devil will run. Please understand this. So the certification from heaven must be respected, honored, and kept safe, and reaffirmed again and again. Hallelujah. Praise God for this. All right, so man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Oh, you, you had, uh, we also had lunch today, and you must have had good lunch, whatever it is. We also had good lunch, whatever. Like, you know, we all have lunch. Three, BLD, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, okay? This is not the thing that Jesus is talking about. Okay? Because what did he say? If you are the son of God, you command these stones to become bread. Jesus is hungry or not hungry? He's hungry. So the devil, he's bringing logic. Very, very logically correct it is. Logically correct. Please understand this. It looks Fantastic. That's, that's, that's the solution for the present problem. You're hungry. And you're the son of God. You can command the stone to become bread. And it'll become bread. And you can eat. Is there a problem with that? When you see on the outside, there's no problem. It doesn't look like a problem. Because of, oh, yes, you know, if if Jesus would have said, yes, I'm the son of God. Okay, let's see. Let me show him the certification that the father has given me. Okay, now I'm the son of God. Now let me convert this. What is that? Now let me, what is I convert these stones into bread immediately? Jesus has not come to listen to the devil. Amen? As much as Jesus has, did not come to listen to the devil, he does, Jesus does not want you and me to listen to the devil. That proves positively. Okay? He's not come here to sh show some uh, hey, his great power in front of the devil. No. Okay? So, let us be careful in this that we will use more of scripture than our common sense. The logic is he's hungry, so convert. So, there, there used to be one, one of our relatives, distant relative, who would uh, talk of a certain big factory, a certain big factory, where, you know, before, this was much, much, much earlier, maybe mid-70s or something. Then there were no surveillance cameras. There was no, nothing, no, not much of security. Everyone believed in each other, had faith. And at the passing out of that gate, it, getting into the, getting into the factory, just say hello and then just get inside. And just go home. He was the one who told me, 
there are some terrible things are happening in that factory. Asked what terrible things. He told me that several of several of those small equipment costing now today it must cost about 30, 40,000, 50,000, 2 lakhs, something like that. Some some gadgets, you know, they were slowly missing from the office or missing from the shop. That means in the factory side, factory side, measuring instruments and all that, micrometer screw gauge and the vernier caliper and all those things, they were slowly missing. There were too many of them. Anyway, you know, one or two missing really did not matter much. So to say they could not identify and then, you know, it must be. Then what happened was, then they found out there was something going on. There was a nexus or a terrible evil connection between some of those factory members who had started their own industry outside and getting all the, all the factory orders for themselves. They used to siphon off. Okay, But to do that, to complete that work, you need the same quality measuring instruments. So what they did was, if, if the cost was 50,000 rupees, let's say 50,000 rupees, the worker promised a certain group of people, those were the senior managerial officers. Okay. So he, he, he suggested that, you know, they, you know, they will give 5,000 rupees, 10% only. If you can pass out of that gate, because the workers were checked from top to bottom, they used to be checked, but the officers' bags also were not checked. There was no scanning, no nothing. So because he was an officer, the temptation was you can bring this gadget out of the gate for money. The temptation is the same. Because you are the son of God. <laughs> If you are the son of God, do this. You, because you are an officer, do this. You will benefit. See, see, dear people, how he brings, how Satan brings, tries to, tries to bring logic and tries to make us fall into various temptations. The temptation is very simple. Nobody will know. <laughs> That's the logic. Nobody will know that you had been here. Nobody will know. <laughs> so these are some of the things that you know he will come and try to tempt you okay let us be careful with our identity you always will affirm and reaffirm who we are in christ all right then what happens and then the devil takes him up to the holy city and set them all up on a pinnacle of the temple saith unto him if thou be the son of god again he says that Cast thyself down, for it is written. Now he starts using scripture. The devil knows scripture. The devil also knows Bible. So we should know more Bible than our enemy. That's why the enemy doesn't want you to know the book. That's why the enemy hates you when you start sitting down and reading and studying God's word. I've always said this, take a pen, take a piece of paper, have a book like this. I said, you know, have a ring file like this so that, you know, you can take the pages off and then you can place it back then. Then again, if you get one more revelation, write it on the same kind of paper, put it in again. Study, no more. No more not to show off. No more so that you can be protected. That's what happened here. So Jesus said, this is the sword of the spirit. We get that in the armor of God. Okay, that we can talk about. That we can talk about. Okay. This is the sword of the spirit that we can fight the devil. But for the sword to be sharp, we need to study and know it. I've said this two, three times, I think, but it is 
still very less. <laughs> I'll say it again. Jesus said, and you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. So the knowledge of the truth that you shelter into the heart, that is the one that the Holy Spirit will use against sin and against the devil when the temptation comes. What does it say? In uh, <clears throat> uh, Psalm 100 and, uh, 119, Psalm 119 is a psalm of glorifying the law of God or the book of God, the Bible. And I'm reading verse 11. Thy word. Okay, let me explain here like this. Okay. <clears throat> Let's say this is the Bible, page of the Bible. Thy word have hid in my heart so that I will not sin against you. It doesn't say your word, I bought it for thousands of rupees and are in my bookshelf so that I will not sin against you. No. All those Bibles, Word of God, different different uh, types of versions or whatever it is, but Word must be hid in the heart. Then what happens is, uh, let me give you a real life scenario. Supposing you read a portion of scripture from maybe book of Ephesians or maybe Romans or Corinthians or even John's Gospel or Psalms or whichever Proverbs, whatever you read and then you know in the morning you would have read uh, uh, maybe two chapters maybe here and one chapter there then you would have just prayed and then you were <clears throat> but some Bible verse you remember okay oh that story I remember that story I remember that story I remember okay that story in the New Testament you remember one story in the Old Testament you remember because you read that today morning you read it <clears throat> Then what happens is when the Bible is stored in the heart, in the afternoon, 2.30 or 3 o'clock, or maybe 5 o'clock in the evening, while you're coming back, either from school, college or work, wherever you went, when you're coming back, you're tempted. What the Holy Spirit does is, whatever word of God you stored in the heart, He'll pick it up and bring it in front of your mind. And this will come back to you alive again. Then you say, I will not sin against God. So the Holy Spirit knows your afternoons and your tomorrows. So the Holy Spirit of God would have encouraged you to read a, so, so, such and such a portion, knowing that such and such a temptation would come. And that time, he will remove and show it in front of your eyes, the spiritual eyes. So you will not, you'll be jerked at that time. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I have to be away. So that is the, that is the meaning of learning, studying, applying God's word in our life. All right. Now let's come back to Matthew 4. We'll finish this, okay? We'll finish this. Verse 6. Uh, he takes him to the pinnacle of the temple. Pinnacle of the temple, okay? And then uh, he says, if you, if thou be the son of God, again he says that, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down. And the devil starts giving scripture. For it is written. <laughs> He's telling to Jesus, you think you only know scripture? I also know scripture. Crazy. Of course, I'll, I'll show you what how he gives half truth, okay? How he gives half truth. So he, he says, and he said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Now I want you to check this up. 
in Psalm 91. Okay, let's check this in Psalm 91. This is the Psalm I think in the midst of the coronavirus and people have been studying Psalm 91, reading and sleeping at night also. Every time you can read, there's no problem. But definitely, let's see what it says here. Okay, what did the devil say? You keep a keep a note on that. You, what I would suggest you do is sometimes what I do is I I take a Xerox copy of this page and that page and cut out that Bible verse and paste it next to each other. And I would like to highlight sometimes the differences that are there in this, even in the harmony of the Gospels. I do the same thing. I do the same thing. I've done that hundreds of times. Okay. Uh, Psalm 91. All right. Verse 10. Verse 10. All right. No, no. Verse 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. Okay. Just hold on there. Just hold on there. Okay. I'm coming back again to verse 6. Verse 6. John, uh, sorry, Matthew 4, 6. If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee or concerning thee. That's okay. Hmm. Okay. Well, what is the next here? To keep thee in all thy ways that he has cancelled. So it looks like what he's trying to tell is he will not keep you even you in this day, in this ways, in this time, in all thy ways, he will keep you. That he minus it. Do one thing, do all this homework for yourselves. I'm not, just don't take it my, my mama, uh, what is that, this version to be correct. No, 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 go to the Bible, go compare and see which are the portions he has cut. Even yesterday also when I said about, uh, you know, he talking to the talking to Eve, the devil talked to Eve, he also messed up, doubted, distorted, and doubt brings distortion, distortion brings death. They died the death. The three Ds. Okay. Uh, verse 6. Okay. And he said unto him again, that is, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give the angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Some of the other things are correct, but he has left that. So what Jesus would have done, he could have said, you know, yeah, I am the son of God. Now let me show you why. Let me jump out of this place. No, he has not come to show off to the devil, as I said. He's not going to listen to the devil. He has come to do greater and mightier things than that. Okay? Then, um, let, let's, let's go ahead. Jesus said to him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. What is the meaning of all this? The meaning of all this is, if you are tempted in the 21st century, okay, 3,500 years ago, the Old Testament was written. It was beginning to return that, that time from Moses as, as we see. Over the period of years, it was written. And in the New Testament, the New Testament is completed 2,000 years ago. So 2,000 years ago, as we, if, we, if we take that reference point, we have the entire Bible. That means it is already written. The solution to today's and tomorrow's problem is already given. Where? In the Word of God. So why do we stress? Why do we pastors stress? You know, you need to study God's Word and keep it. And know it. Because you can use it against them. If somebody asks you, come, somebody comes and asks you, you know, why do you, why do you believe? Why do you believe in, in Jesus? <clears throat> First Peter 3, 15. Okay. First Peter 3, 14. Okay. 15. First Peter 3, 15. Now let me read for you. But sanctify the Lord God in your heart. That means you honor, you separate him and give him the sanctified, glorified position of who Christ is in your heart. Sanctifying the Lord in your heart means you need to give that position to <clears throat> Christ in your heart and be ready always 
to give an answer to every man, always to every man, to ready to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. When to answer? Always. Whom to answer? Everybody. What to answer? The reason of the hope that is in you. How to answer with meekness and with fear. So if you have the Bible, you can speak. Come on, let's 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 study the Bible. Because it is written. Okay? Just we'll we'll take one more and then we'll finish just now. Another three, four minutes I have. Uh, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4. We've already seen two, two temptations that came to Jesus. Okay? One is, make the stones into bread and then eat because you're hungry. Logic. And then, takes, uh, Satan takes him to the top of the pinnacle of the temple. Here I think how we can retranslate it to our, <clears throat> or rather reapply it to our lives is, <clears throat> What does the temple show? Spiritual life. It's a temptation for me and for people who are in leadership. I can get to the temple, pinnacle, and say, you know, who is like you? Ah, you're on the top, yeah? Yeah? That's the temptation of the devil. I think I need to, and we all need to take care as far as this kind of ego pumping by the devil is concerned. You are just fantastic. No one will no, no one will know anything. No one will talk about it. No one it's just, just it's okay. It doesn't matter. It's an easy trap. But it's a trap. Okay? So after this, you know, then verse seven. Verse seven. Okay. Jesus said them to him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again he comes. That means to say the devil doesn't tempt you. And if you just chase him, he's the most shameful guy on planet earth. Why I say shameful is, supposing you talk to your friend, something and says, no, don't come to my house, I say. Some relatives, if you say, no, don't come to our house. Finished. It's all over. They at least because of their self-respect, they will not come to your house. Unless you call, call, call again five, ten times, then you'll say sorry and then they will come. But the devil, you chase him once, again shamelessly he will come again. The most shameless person is the devil himself. Okay? Then, again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, Okay? All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Here he doesn't say, here he doesn't make use of the certificate. He doesn't make use of the certificate. In the other two he said, if you are the son of God. Why here he doesn't use the certificate is, <laughs> If he had said, if the devil had said, if you are the son of God, all these things I'll give it to you. That's a paradox. That's ridiculous. If he's the son of God, he already possesses everything. He couldn't have said that. He knows what to say. Satan knows what to say at what time. We need to know what to, how to oppose him, how to resist him. All right. So he doesn't, so he doesn't use this. Uh, say the name, all these things will I give, give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. In this, I'll give you a, a side thought which came to me. That <clears throat> what was the first messianic prophecy that means messianic means Jesus coming into the coming on to planet Earth to save us. It was started in Genesis three fifteen. What does it say? I just read that because then only we have a 
logical conclusion to this entire thing. Okay, Genesis chapter three and verse fifteen. God is speaking to the devil here. Oh, that's amazing! Yeah, you know what? <laughs> well, let's let's put God here on my right side. God is speaking to the devil. Okay, let, let's do one. Let, let's do like this. Okay, let's bring these two in picture. Man is here. Adam and Eve are here. Let's say God is speaking to the devil. While God is speaking to the devil, he makes a way of salvation for man in that discussion. <laughs> I like that. I like that. When God is speaking to the devil, he makes a salvation plan for human beings now standing with fig leaves around themselves. That's grace. So what does he say in verse 15? God is speaking to the devil. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. Woman does not have a seed in herself. It's the man who has a seed who, who, who the seed is transferred to the woman. And lo and behold, the child begins to grow. So the woman with the seed in her is Mary, the Virgin Mary, as we call. It's, it's Mary, the mother of Jesus. So human beings now, human beings now can have salvation. God is speaking to the devil. He's made the first messianic prophecy that Jesus is coming. He's the seed of the woman. He's going to crush your head. He's going to crush your head. Who? Jesus is going to crush the devil's head. Where did, he, where did that happen? You're right, on the cross. Who spoke to whom? Who spoke to whom? God spoke to the devil. So the devil, devil kept it in memory that there is coming the seed of the woman woman who is going to crush my head. And then build his kingdom. That is why the devil says, I'll give you the kingdom. Don't go to the cross. You just fall down and worship me. It'll all be over. Uh, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. No way. Jesus knew that the devil is trying to disturb him on the road to his destiny. Okay. Let me finish here. Otherwise, I think you know, we'll still be here till six o'clock. Okay. All right. Let me finish here. What is the first one? What is the first one? That the devil wanted to disturb your identity in Christ. Now, the devil with the third temptation to Jesus, he's trying to disturb him from the destiny for which he had come into this world. So, so dear people of God, young people as well as older people, let me tell you the truth. As Jesus was tempted, like us at all points, as these three points. What are the, those three points I have told you yesterday? Lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Okay? Lust of the eyes, to see the kingdoms. Lust of the flesh, to eat that bread. And what is the pride of life? I'm on top of the pinnacle of the temple. I'm perfect, Mr. Perfect. See, in these three areas only he will ground. So in all three points as he was tempted, like we are being tempted today. We have sinned many times maybe, but he, Jesus, never sinned. That's why we have a hope. So, as soon as you are certified as, as a child of God, don't think you are left scot-free. Immediately, Satan turns to you. 
and tries to come and tempt you. Dear people, let me tell you, there is the, the one that is inside you and me, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has conquered the devil. He's conquered the devil. He's conquered the grave. He's conquered sin. He's conquered the lake of fire for you on the cross and brought it out alive. The conquering statement, he brought it alive because he, is, he lives, he's come out of the tomb and he's come into your life. He's sitting in your home right now. He's, he's, just, he's, just, he's just there. He's just there. He's just in my house. Me is as much as he's in you. So greater is the one who is in us than the one who is in the world. Let's go conquering. Praise be to Jesus. Glory to God. Amen.